Hey there everybody, it's Alex here from VG247.com and you're looking at a little bit of footage of Outriders, which I know nothing about, but luckily I'm joined by James, who actually is the guy who was playing for this footage. Hello. Hey James. Hi. So, obviously I know this is a Square Enix game and I know it's one of their Western games and I know it's coming from uh, People Can Fly, who people probably best know for Bulletstorm but I don't know anything else, so tell me about Outriders. So, you mentioned that it's from People Can Fly, so they're the Polish studio that, as you said, are behind Bulletstorm, but another game that they did was Gears of War Judgment. And yes, of course, yeah. I think, if, uh, as you can see from the footage, it's pretty hilarious how close this is to Gears of War. It is, it's, it's got that same kind of over-the-shoulder perspective. Yeah slide in between cover, popping out with your big meaty gun, shooting dudes. It's it's basically, let's say they've taken some inspiration from the previous work to, to start with Outriders. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you, you're hopping in and out behind cover and you're shooting and, and all that sort of stuff. What do you think differentiates it from Gears then? So, the main differentiation is the space magical powers that you've got. There's a big kind of sort of Mass Effect biotic powers vibe that's going on here. Hmm. Um, so yeah, there are all sorts of different classes that do different things. There's a guy that can use kind of like time magic to slow people down. There's like a pyromancer. Uh, there's somebody that can like cause earthquakes and cloak themselves in kind of a rocky armor kind of thing. Uh, so that's what they've done to kind of shake it up a bit from just being a straight dystopian sort of future war thing. So uh, when you say, you mentioned Mass Effect style Bartic powers, obviously when I think Mass Effect, I think straight away that that's a game that actually had a class system and lots of different powers that, of different kinds, depending on which class you're looking at. So does this have that sort of thing or is it more that you're one soldier and you've got one set of abilities and that's it? Is there a skill tree? Like how does all that pan out? Exactly, there is a skill tree. So it is that differentiated uh, different kind of classes. So there's three that we got to play as um, in the preview. Uh, the Devastator, the Pyromancer, and the Trickster. Um, so the Devastator is the kind of tanky guy that I mentioned mm. can use rock armor and cause earthquakes. Uh, they're kind of like the... So Outriders is built for one to three player co-op. Three players? Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit of a different mix and... I think that the Devastator is a little more suited to the solo uh, solo run. Uh, yeah, because cause they're a bit can... more tanky. They can exactly. soak up some damage. You yeah. can build you can build out your kind of survivability with your different armor skills and things like that. And you have different skill trees that increase your, I'm going to say, biotic powers because it's easier. Um, you can build out, as I say, you can build out your, your different skill trees for to increase your powers. Or you can go down the sort of more gears of war s kind of grunty stuff where you increase your health your weapon damage that sort of stuff um and then you have the kind of pyromancer who's more of a medium range kind of aoe style character who's a bit squishier um and then there's the trickster who is pretty op basically so there is a bit more of a meta game to it the the classes are quite different although some do feel a lot more powerful than others and that comes down to the uh, the system of healing in Outriders. So the, instead of just having health packs or whatever, um, each one has a slightly different healing mechanic, they call it. Um, so the Devastator and the Pyromancer, uh, sorry, just the Devastator um, and Trickster have a system where if you kill an enemy up close, it replenishes your health some, while the Pyromancer, you have to tag enemies with your abilities and then kill them hmm. uh, to replenish your health. So... With the Devastator, it's more of a straight kind of shooter experience where you're, you're popping in and out of cover, you're building out your survivability, you're trying to tank hits and deal damage with your Earthquake. And then the Trickster, he has a lot more of a sort of mobility-based skill set because of the time magic that he uses. Um, so you have like a sort of bubble shield ability, very much like the uh, Titan in Destiny that kind of blocks all of your team from damage and slows down uh, bullets and things like that um, and they can kind of teleport behind people and have like a short range melee ability um, so that's 
a bit more of a a bit quicker of a of a skill set, and then the Pyromancer because of their different healing mechanic, their gameplay is much more based around lining up different enemies so that you can tag them with these skills and then uh, defeat them quickly so you can stay healthy. So, in terms of obviously, you know, and you can tell from what you're saying there that that this is a game where when you play co-op these classes are sort of going to mesh and interact in interesting ways but in terms of that co-op obviously you know we've made comparisons to gears which obviously has co-op but it's a linear single you know single shot story sort of experience and then there's the comparison to mass effect which obviously um, is primarily a single player game i don't think really the multiplayer that they did is probably relevant in a comparison to this but what form format does it take when you do do co-op? Is it sort of like, here's the story we're playing through the story cooperatively, or is it sort of pushing towards basically that sort of you mentioned Destiny, that sort of Destiny and from Monster Hunter style stuff where maybe you're grouping up with people and going out on on a set you know raid mission or something. So it's a bit of a hodgepodge of the two from what we played in the preview. So. It's very clear that there's a lot of Mass Effect inspiration in the RPG side of Outriders, that you have mm -hmm. you have some kind of dialogue choices and things like that. But it is a creator character. It's very clear that people can fly at shooting for that kind of Shepard style. Oh, it's a creator character, but it's still a very main character. You're not a kind of silent protagonist or whatever. Um, mm. So, but when you're playing in co-op, you just kind of go through the cutscenes as your character and then you go into the mission as three people. There's a bit of a, a bit of a weird kind of disconnect there. So you're, you're experiencing kind of your own story, but with your mates sometimes. So, sort of like, as yeah. weird as this sounds, that reminds me of Dead Rising 2, uh, where you could have co-op, but co-op would just be like a second Chuck yeah, Green or whatever. Exactly, and exactly. Then yeah, it's kind of like cut scenes, the other guy would disappear. Exactly, exactly like that. It's like a single play story, but the the you play the levels in between quite hmm, Interesting. So yeah. I, I guess how did you find Carp? I get I'm guessing did they let you play cooperatively with, with some other media? Yeah, stuff? I played both solo and cooperatively. Um obviously I can't talk for the balance of it because I it's think early because it yeah it was early and it was definitely um scaled for playing as three people mm -hmm. it was very very yeah. it was very very hard to do solo um so i don't think that they would keep that level of difficulty in the final build um but the the co-op was good as as you as you mentioned the the, the powers work well together, especially when you're kind of pairing the shorter range classes like the Devastator and the Trickster with the Pyromancer, so you can kind of use their more bombastic skills together. So the the Pyromancer has sort of like a wall of flame thing that they conjure up, and that works well with the, the, the Trickster's uh, time bubble. It works well with the Devastator's Earthquake. Uh, so it is fun to use the different characters together. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it works well, but it's just whether there are going to be more classes than that, I think. So it's just how much variety there is, how balanced they are together. I mentioned that the Trickster's loads better than the other ones, just because of their kind of raw damage output. Um, and it's just how much of the, the a balance they managed to get to that, that kind of meta aspect of it. Because it's something that... Destiny does really well, right? In a kind of similar, in a similar sort of shared shared world shooter kind of thing, um, that the the three classes are quite are quite well rounded, um, but it'll be interesting to see whether they can get they can even out this the power level. Well, that was actually something I was going to ask. You mentioned, you know, that there's more. There's probably going to be more classes to come. I know it's early days, but now with games like this they're sort of encouraged to speak pretty much straight away about what they're going to be doing after release going forward. Like, is this a game where are they talking about it as if it's going to be, they're going to be adding stuff service style to keep you playing co-op after release or what? So 
you've used the the word of the hour there service live service Mm -hmm. Um, they very very specifically said to us that they were completely rejecting this sort of live service microtransaction led model um, in favor of they wanted to give people uh, air quotes complete experience from from the off really which is which is very interesting in light of the big flops like anthem or whatever that were really kind of grasping from the from the off of just well it's feeling, interesting feeling just in, it's interesting just in regards to obviously they're saying that about this game at the same time that they're giving up to put out avengers <laughs> <laughs> yeah which is uh, yeah it's yeah it's an interesting it's an interesting route to take for it but mm. what i thought was they I, I i did actually ask about what you said about uh later game content are they going to add stuff and they wouldn't talk about that and as you say there is a pressure to think what what's going to be at the end game of this kind of co-op shooter um, mm. so i think they may be positioning it a little bit like something like anthem but it's more it, it is actually more like more like mass effect or gears of war it's just it, but it's just saying that in out loud now, it does feel like a bit of a weird hodgepodge of all different kind of stuff. So, yeah, we'll have to see if the messaging gets a little bit clearer. I mean, I guess the most important question is, what did you think? Like, is it good? Does it handle well? Because obviously, people can fly. They made Bulletstorm. Bulletstorm was a good, a good feeling game, and that was, you know, all original, all theirs. Obviously, that was a first-person game, and the third-person they ga- game they did, Gears Judgment, obviously that was basically building on the work that the previous Gears teams had done because that was, if I remember right, that was sort of like a stopgap game in between in between Epic finishing with Gears and Microsoft getting um, what are they called? The Coalition up and running. Yeah. Um, so how does it feel? The, you know, cause this is really, I guess the first time they've built a third person game like this from the ground up. Hmm. I think there are kind of three prongs to how it feels so the first is the is the gameplay that you mentioned that kind of solid core of what they made with Gears of War Judgment and it it does feel good to play. It has that same kind of I don't know sort of intensity that you get from the the, the, the kind of blinkered over the shoulder perspective. So, so you're kind of mm-hmm. running between different cover and the enemies are quite aggressive. So you're, you're pushed into using these things. Um, you pushed into repositioning yourself, and something that they did mention is that they wanted the powers to be more gun-like in their utility. So the cooldowns for stuff is really is really short, um, right. which, which I thought was a good idea um, because I'm totally one of those kind of people that hoards all of the super rockets and that you get to use on the bosses, and then have all of them left at the end of the game and forget to use all of my different powers and all that stuff because I'm just wrapped up in the kind of core shooting of stuff and so to very specifically push you to be very liberal with these powers makes it a much more i've used this word before kind of bombastic kind of intense Mm -hmm. experience and i and i do like that core shooting action part of it a lot it's good that part of it is good so i guess it's a question of almost if they can Make that universe work for it, right? Like, exactly. And, and that's get the, people invested. There, that's the second prong of what it's like. So the the story side of it, uh, and I haven't spoken about that, so I'll give you a bit of an overview now. Um, mm. The fiction of it is intriguing. It's again a bit of a hodgepodge of different things. There's echoes of like the anthem of creation from Anthem and that kind of future world stuff that you see from everything from Halo to Mass Effect to Gears. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's like a dystopian future where there's a dying earth and you're part of this expedition of soldiers and scientists that try to find a new golden world for people to live on. Uh, And so you go to this distant planet called Enoch um, and you land and it's all lovely and there's rolling fields and nice cows and things like that. Um, And this is all in about the first 15 minutes of the game. Um, The things that start to go a little unexpectedly wrong so your team encounters something called the anomaly which is 
uh, kind of mysterious force, as I say, with echoes of the kind of anthem of creation, sort of unknowable, unintelligible kind of mysterious force that is on this planet of Enoch. And it seemingly either turns you into a space wizard or just kills you straight up. So, Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah. So, after this kind of encounter with the anomaly, your team are pushed back uh, to the kind of cryosleep chamber that they've come through space in, and this instigates a 30 year time skip where your, char your creator character is pushed back into cryosleep. Mm -hmm. And you wake up to this kind of future eternal war between the people that used to be your friends on your team, sort of Mad, Mad Max, uh, Fury Roads, uh, kind of war boys style uh, feral goon dudes, and then people called the Altered, who are the, the, the people that become space wizards from the anomaly, basically. They're sort of in the middle, kind of, of these two warring factions and as an altered yourself an altered outrider that has access to these elemental powers you kind of take it upon yourself to end this war sort of make sense of the anomaly and kind of make a new life for yourself on this new planet and as i say it's intriguing it's good i like the the implementation of that time skip the 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 juxtaposition of you coming in and seeing this kind of beautiful world and then it all getting churned up into this very dark, grim, futuristic war is is really kind of representative of the sort of grim, dark world that people can fly, uh, try to build with Outriders. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, although it is a little uneven, I would be interested to see what more they can do with it. Um, I say I say it's a little uneven because you do go from who am I, what's happened, what's going on, to just straight up murdering blokes pretty quickly. Well, so, video games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but in the but in the cutscenes as well, you just like shooting blokes that are just like, please don't kill me, and then you just like shooting them in the head in cutscenes pretty fast. So. I think things might have been moved about a bit for the preview, but it's an yeah, well, but, yeah, but, it's, sounds... but it's an interesting concept. It's just whether it's a little unevenly distributed throughout the throughout the game, or whether they've they've focused on trying to get that core gameplay loop down first. Well, that's that's interesting, and to be honest, that sounds like one, uh, it sums it up, and two. Uh, it's pretty much bang on time because today we can only use 20 minutes of gameplay uh, we are going to be able to post some more a little later though so people can check back to the channel uh, people can also read the site right you can have some stuff on the site yeah exactly um i'm gonna have a full preview on site where i talk a bit more about the issues that i have with the loot system there are a lot of beige cargo pants that you can find dotted around this futuristic war. Ah, the uh, vision syndrome. Exactly. Ghost it's Recon syndrome also. It's exactly Ghost Recon Breakpoint. So, um, yeah, there's a little bit more to talk about there. So, we'll see. Cool. Well, thanks a lot for explaining it to me and uh, to everyone at home. If you enjoyed this, if you want to hear more on Outriders or any other upcoming games, uh, don't forget to press all the buttons that are positive, likes, subscribes, etc. It helps us. It genuinely does, I promise. I think. That's what I'm told. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, don't forget to check back. Like I say, we'll have some more gameplay footage as we get closer and closer to launch. When is this out, by the way? So, nobody really knows. Right, I, okay. I think it's holiday 2020. Right, and it's, I assume this is PC, PS4, Xbox One. Or is it? I, right, so they're not really saying. It's confirmed for next gen. Okay, right, but it is on. Is it is it on the current platforms as well, or it will be on the current platforms and the next ones? Right, awesome, awesome. And you played on PC, I'm guessing. High end PC. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Well, thanks a lot, James. Thank you. Until next time, everyone. See ya.